Welcome to the Lisma Partners meeting. This is our agenda for today. We'll begin with a Lisma update. Then we can go around the room and have roundtable reports and announcements. And I'll explain this more in a little while, but if you have anything related to education and outreach needs, you could present that if you want at the roundtable announcements. Let us know if you're interested in any education and outreach materials or any subjects that you would like to be covered in education. Then we'll have a 10 minute break and then we'll go into the workshops at 11. This is our team. Most of you know us, I'm Bill Jacobs, program manager. I'm joined by Abby Besrutsik and Haley Gladich. We'll begin with field updates with Haley and Abby. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, so um, heading into this winter, I was actually pretty bummed that our field season seemed like it was pretty much over. But um, these last few months, we've actually had several ongoing projects that have really kept us outside as much as possible. So during our last partners meeting in November, we shared that Region 1 DEC notified us of a small patch of Ludwigia peploides at Artist Lake in the town of Brookhaven which is not too far from the headwaters of the Carmen River. Not only is Ludwigia a tier three in Lisma where we're tasked with containing these species where they're found, but through our water body prioritization that was developed through the Long Island Metro Aquatic Task Force, this water body is considered a relatively high priority for invasive species monitoring, as well as invasive species control due to its presence of rare and endangered plant species. Um, by mid-December, the town of Brookhaven was granted a permit for manual control of Ludwigia. And just a few days later, on a particularly warm day, we were able to assemble a team of uh, LISMA staff, Region 1 DEC Fisheries, and Town of Brookhaven staff to hand fold the patch. Um, while we were all there, we also spent a decent amount of time kind of going through the water and looking for any seeds that we can find um, and, you know, kind of removing them from the shoreline um, and netting them through the water. Um, and here you can see on the left um, the patch when it was first discovered in October. Um, pretty green and kind of filling that area around that button bush. Um, and then on the right, you can really see um, all, the, all the work we did pulling it out and removing it. And all this is to really say a huge thanks to the Region 1 DEC staff and the town of Brookhaven for making this a real true early detection and rapid response. And if I may add, Haley, this is the second location for Ludwigia. It was previously confined to the Peconic River. This is the first time we found it outside the Peconic River. And this is by the headwaters of the Carmen's River. It's roughly three quarters of a mile or less to the Carmen's River. Now, Abby Haley and I surveyed the Carmen's River this fall and we did not see Ludwigia, but uh, so this is a little concerning because it's close. Yeah. We'll, we'll be back in the spring to and summer to remove the rest of it. For sure. Yeah, we definitely have plans to keep monitoring and removing. But yeah, and with that, um, we've also been working on some winter moth surveying. So late November and early December, we once again assisted um, in winter moth uh, surveys with CCE entomologist Dan Gilrain and Dr. Jeremy Anderson from the Elkington Laboratory at the University of Amherst, um, where they're hoping to really understand the size and the abundance of winter moth populations across Long Island. Um, winter moth, um, which is an invasive species, has caused heavy defoliation of trees in eastern Massachusetts. But meanwhile, in Long Island, we haven't seen um, sim that, the same damage here. And it's also been present in relatively low abundances for several years. Um, it can be pretty difficult to discern um, from its native lookalike in Cogener, the Bruce spanworm. And it can also fall prey to the traps, making ID pretty difficult which is why um, recently they're really looking into using eDNA analysis, um, using samples from inside of the traps that we were using to really identify if winter moth is present um, in the various locations where we place traps across Long Island and in the abundances um, that might lead to defoliation. Um, we also wanna thank CCE, CCE Suffolk, especially Dan for making sure these surveys happen successfully with LISMA. And we wanna thank the town of Hempstead, Avalon Park and Three Village Community Trust and Third House Nature Center for helping us to place these traps within your parks. Um, with that, we really look forward to hearing the results of Dr. Anderson's research and hopefully continuing to get a better understanding of this emerging invasive species on Long Island. 
And last but not least, um, as many of you might know, hemlock woolly adelgid is a widespread pest of hemlock trees and really threatens the this, uh, this species throughout New York State. Because of that, the New York State Hemlock Initiative is out, uh, out of Cornell University is working with several New York State prisons to search for remaining stands of hemlock trees in order to potentially release an, uh, release an approved biocontrol. While hemlock trees are in far less abundance on Long Island, there are a few hemlock trees that may be present um, in this area that could be a huge help in providing habitat for these biocontrols so they can really persist without the need for reintroduction, which can really be costly and time consuming. Um, compared to the rest of New York State, um, where hemlock woolly adelgid pressure is really increasing, Long Island milder's winter might allow for these biocontrols to overwinter and provide genetically adapted biocontrols for the rest of the state. So we're really asking if you guys have seen hemlock woolly adelgid trees anywhere, if you could you know, let us know, map them at IMAP or um, iNaturalist and reach out to me through email. Thanks. Thank you, Haley. Updates on engagement and outreach. Yeah, thanks, Haley. Um, we have a number of updates on engagement and outreach. You can go to the next slide. Um, very excitingly, we have a new website that is live. Hopefully you guys have seen it now. It's still on lisma.org. And from July to December, we've been working on fully redesigning it in-house um, with Elementor and WordPress. So there's a lot you could do with those tools if anybody's interested. Um, for example, on the species page, you can learn about dozens of invasive species and even sort them based on their life form and tier ranking. That's something you couldn't do before on the old website. Um, if you want to take action and help us prevent the spread of invasive species, the Get Involved page has some simple actions boiled down to five main, uh, yeah, Bill's going to the website now, <laughs> five main categories that um, you know, make it simple for you to do the right thing with invasive species. And we have a number of resources that has everything from general guidelines for managing an invasion, advice for educators and gardeners, and even some of our favorite podcasts and books about invasive species. And lastly, um, we have pages dedicated to each of our invasive species prevention zones, if you wanna learn more about them, and the tier list to see how we rank different invasive species across the Lisner region. So we hope that this could be really useful to you. We worked really hard to put it together, thinking about people like you in mind who want to learn more about this information. And um, yeah, definitely check it out and give us any feedback. Thank you, Abby. I have to find the, uh, the presentation again. There it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. We are also excited to announce the Resilient Long Island Symposium um, hosted by LISMA and our host, host organization, the Long Island Native Plant Initiative, or LIMPI. So on April 7th, save that date, you can join us virtually to hear presentations on nearly 20 different topics, ranging from backyard invasives to choosing the right pesticide for a given problem, to restoration, climate change, ecosystem protection, and forest health and more. So we're really excited about our fantastic lineup of speakers. Um, soon you'll be able to see that uh, live on a, its own conference website pretty soon, and registration will also open soon with um, continuing education credits that we're hoping to be made available. So help us spread the word. April 7th uh, is all virtual. It's all virtual, so if you have no excuse, you should come. <laughs> and lastly, it's never too early to start planning NISA. In fact, shout out to CCE Suffolk for being the first ones to start planning an event with us. We're really excited to do an event with them. Um, it's June 6th to 12th and We'd, uh, if you have an idea, we'd love to help you bring it to life. This is a great opportunity for partnership, engaging the public on invasive species issues and all kinds of fun ideas. It's limitless. You could have a movie night or a scavenger hunt or maybe something more traditional like a invasive species poll or a walk in the woods, but the possibilities are endless. So definitely be creative, get thinking. Um, we really encourage you to start planning now and let us know however we can help and be involved. We want to show everyone how great our area is and why it deserves to be protected from invasive species. Thanks. Thank you, Abby. Lisma is hiring. We have uh, some money in the budget to hire temporary educational and outreach staff. We've just completed interviews for a graphic designer and an environmental educator. We'll have more on those two persons soon. 
they'll both be working until June 30th on providing educational materials, working with the website, helping us update our table display and lots of other things. If any of our partners have graphics needs or environmental education needs related to producing educational materials, please let us know and we'll try to work that in. We will also be hiring seasonal EDRR field technicians very soon and the, the job announcement will go out shortly. That will be for the spring and early summer. We have five subcontracts that we're working on. It was six. We weren't able to work out the subcontract in New York City, but we have five great projects. Westbrook, working with SeaTuck on controlling Phragmites at that very unique wetland that they have uh, by Connectquat. Then in the center here, we have the, uh, the uh, Viburnum study at Brentwood. Amanda Ferkel will be on a little later to talk more about that work. A little further over on the top right, we're working with the Third House Nature Center on Arthraxon education and management at the Montauk County Park, one of two known locations on Long Island for this invasive plant, Arthraxon. Then on the bottom there, we're working with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Nassau County on education and outreach related to spotted lantern fly. And then on the lower right, working with Hempstead Plains to control invasive species at that location. So as we get closer to the field season, we'll have more updates on those projects. It's time for the annual report that LISMA does every year. And it's important to include the work of our partners. So if you can fill out the questionnaire that went out, we'll resend it just to uh, make sure, but it's the annual questionnaire where you can uh, enter what kind of uh, invasive species management, monitoring, education, restoration, things like that, that you did in 2021. Or you can shoot us an email if you have a different format that you'd like to use for your annual report, that's fine. And we'll just work it into the, the uh, comprehensive LISMA report for the DEC. Some upcoming events. I guess I can do this one, and I don't know, Abby or Haley, if you wanted to do this one, but uh, I'll start it. There's a Peconic River Ludwigia stakeholder meeting on February 16th and 17th. Check with Abby or Haley for more information on that one. We are giving a presentation with the Peconic Land Trust on March 2nd in the evening, virtual presentation on forest threats. And then on March 24th, we're giving a presentation on horticulture and cultural invasive species with CCE of Suffolk County. And of course, in the blue box here, April 7th, our biennial symposium, Resilient Long Island. That will be all day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we can do our usual around the room roundtable announcements. Again, if you can think of any education and outreach needs, or if you'd like to talk more about education and outreach at another time, just let us know and, and uh, we'll get in touch or you can get in touch with us.